Hello everyone, welcome to Fill the Gap. I'm Dr. Anpu and today I'm going to talk about three drugs, three very important drugs that is always asked for NEET MDS exam. At least one to two questions definitely comes from these two, these three drugs. So lidocaine, articaine, bupivacaine. First we look at the du duration of action. So lidocaine starts with L, L for little, so lidocaine has a shortest sh duration of action. Articaine is in the middle, so medium duration of action. And bupivacaine, since it has a long name, it has a long duration of action, longest duration of action. That's an easy way to remember. I just gave you easy ideas to help you remember this. Now, when we talk about the duration of action, we need to know the pulpal duration of action and the soft tissue duration of action. So pulpally lidocaine is around 60 minutes, articaine is 60 to 75 and bupivacaine is around 90 minutes. And when it comes to soft tissues, 180 to 300 for lidocaine, 180 to 300 again for articaine. But when it comes to bupivacaine, it is 240 to 720. So that's pretty big. Yes. Now let's talk about the concentration of use. At what concentration these drugs are used? So again, the concentration of use is around 2 percentage. Articaine 4 and bupivacaine 0.5 percentage. So articaine is 4. Now this 4 looks like the letter A. You see a resemblance? Yeah. So that's an easy way to remember that articaine is 4. Now lidocaine is little. Oh, and it comes before articaine, so it is less. So 2 is less than 4, that's an easy way to remember. But bupivacaine is an exceptional case because we only use 0.5. So even though it has a longest duration of action, the uh, concentration of usage is 0.5 percentage. Okay, so lidocaine again now when it comes to it, it's around 1 is to 1 lakh. And same goes to art articaine, 1 is to 1 lakh. But bupivacaine, bupivacaine, it is two, 1 is to 2 lakh. So this is the concentration of usage. Now, let's look at the PKA. Now, the PKA for lidocaine is 7.8. But articaine is also 7.8. But bupivacaine is different. It's 8.1. So how do you remember it? I'll just show you an easy way to remember this. Because these are values that are important. And... MCQ can come with this values. So, okay. So, L, if you write it upside down, it's a 7. So, that's an easy way to remember, 7.8. Now, articaine, sometimes some people write the letter 7 like this. So, if you can actually make an A with that 7. So, again, A, 7, and this looks like an L. So, again, 7.8. But bupivacaine, 8.1, how will you remember? B looks like the letter 8. So, that's an easy way to remember. So, these are the PKA values, PKA values. Now let's look at the side effects. First, let's look at lidocaine. So mainly it has changes in the brain and in the heart. Sorry for the poor drawing. The brain, you'll see changes like, so basically neurological changes like slurred speech, patient may go into coma, you'll see arrhythmias and even seizures. Heart changes is when you Combine lidocaine with a vasoconstrictor like, a, like let's say, adrenaline. What happens is it can have a side effect of hypertension and tachycardia. What is hypertension? Hypertension is increase in BP. And tach uh, tachycardia is increase in heart rate. So it's all related to the heart. Also, if you give a person greater than 5 to 10 microgram per ml, of lidocaine, you can see changes in the ECG, ECG changes. And if you give, let's say, about 7 microgram per ml, you'll see tonic-clonic seizures in the patient. So these are the side effects of lidocaine. Now let's talk about articaine. Now articaine shows similar effects, side effects as lidocaine, but it has some unique side effects and that's what we're going to look at. And first is neural. I'm going to draw a nerve here so that you can remember it. So neural, oops, yeah. And I'm going to draw, let's say, blood and 
eyes. So let's discover the eyes first. It causes ocular changes. It causes, um, when it comes to the nerve, you'll see neuropathies and paresthesia to the lingual nerve. Okay. Now, what happens to the blood? Well, you, it causes methemohemoglobinemia. Now, this is also caused by another drug. Do you guys remember? Yeah, it's prilocaine. So, methemohemoglobinemia is basically, there's a lot of methemoglobin in your blood. This causes our, the iron in our hemoglobin to stay in the ferric state. Now, when it is in the ferric state, what happens is it cannot carry, the iron cannot carry uh, oxygen. Now, we need oxygen to be transported to various parts of the body. That doesn't happen. That only happens in the ferrous state. But when it's when there is a lot of methemoglobin in our body, this doesn't happen. So that can cause a lot of problems like coma, even death. So that is another complication. So what you need to remember, like you remembered here, we, we drew a brain and a heart. So it's easy to remember the side effects of lidocaine. Articaine, you need to remember the nerve, blood for methemoglobinemia and eyes. Next is bupivacaine. Bupivacaine is uh, doesn't have so much of a crazy side effects like the like these two nausea vomiting not diarrhea it's constipation and local irritation usually tissue irritation like itching and things like that now fda has pregnancy categories where uh, they tell you exactly which drugs can be used and cannot be used and they've made drugs into categories so category a is acceptable generally acceptable category b is maybe acceptable so i'll just put a question mark maybe acceptable c use with caution c for caution again c and c d is for emergency so d for die dying some patient who's dying or an emergency basically and x means don't use okay so <clears throat> So why is it why is A acceptable? Because control studies are, have been done and pregnant woman does not show any evidence of fetal risk. So the baby is safe if they take that particular drug which falls under category A. Now category B may be acceptable. Why? Because see, either it doesn't show any risk uh, on animals. They've tested it on animals and it doesn't show any risk. And in humans, they have no data available. That is B. And C, use with caution because it has a risk. So animal studies show risk and um, human studies are unavailable. And D is die or someone, I'm just using the word die so that you can remember it. Uh, it's basically anyone who's in emergency or a life-threatening um, situation, you can use this drug. But definitely it shows a risk. That is positive evidence of risk. But since um, we need this drug for the person, to save the person, we, we can just give it to them. But it's risk for, risky for the fetus or the baby. And X is don't use it because the risk outweigh the benefits. Risk is greater than the benefits. So um, if there's any other safer alternative, you should go for that. So now these drugs, they all fall under which category? That is what we need to know. Lidocaine falls under B. That is maybe acceptable. So lidocaine is here. B. Articaine is C. That means use with caution. Bupivacaine is also C. Use with caution. So there's another classification. This is based on the biological site and mode of action. So it's again classified into A, B, C and D. And A has tetrodotoxin and saxitoxin. Basically anything that ends with a toxin. And B is quaternary ammonium plus scorpion venom. C is benzocaine. And D is lidocaine, mepivacaine, trilocaine and all of this. So the drugs that we are talking about, all three, lidocaine, articaine, and bupivacaine, they all three come under D, class D. Okay, so this is another classification that you should remember uh, and you should know exactly where these three drugs fall. So they fall under D. Now let's just go through each drug. I just want to give you a uses of each drug and a quick overview. So lidocaine is the safest anesthetic. Is it's a go-to anesthetic. It's widely used, uh, mainly because of its potency and because of its efficacy. Efficacy. Okay, so it's basically the gold standard. That's why I've just drawn a gold trophy so that you can remember it. So that is about lidocaine. Now, on the heart, it has a use. It can act as an antiarrhythmic agent. That is, if you give around 1.5 to 5 microgram 
close to 5, no, you don't have to reach 5, uh, 5 microgram per, per ml, it can act as an antiarrhythmic agent. It comes under class 1B sodium channel blocker. So you learn more about this in pharmacology when I take some videos on that. So this is one use of uh, lidocaine. And at 5% uh, you can even use it topically. Half-life is 90 minutes. So this is about lidocaine. Next is articaine. Now articaine is the only drug which has an amide, ester and a theophene ring. So this can be an MCQ question. So this is only an aesthetic drug with all three. Now just for fun, I've drawn a ring here so that you can remember it. Because you know, when we come and sit in the exam, probably the only thing that you probably won't remember all these words that I've written, but you might be able to recall these images. So yes, that's a ring, theophan ring. All right. Next, um, Artigan is a fast inducer, fast. And it's a becoming more and more popular drug. So fast and popular. So I've just drawn a racing car here. Racing cars are fast and hence it's very popular and people love seeing it. So that's an easy way to remember it. And articaine perfuses through bone. Perfuses through bone. And the anesthetic half-life is 30 minutes. And it's also used for periodontal ligament pain. So that's why I've drawn uh, the PDL here. And last but not the least, it's bupivacaine. And bupivacaine is long-acting. We already know about that. And because it's long-acting, it's used in epidurals. Epidurals. So the anesthetic half-life is 3.5 hours. So the other two was 90 and 30 minutes. Now this is hours we're talking about. Now if a question comes with um, debucane in the option, um, then you have to select debucane as the longest acting drug. But if, de if debucane is not there and bupivacaine is there, then select bupivacaine. So these are just some tricks that you need to know. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do subscribe to my channel. Thank you.